Now, we're doing all of this work because we want to answer client questions. And here's the question that the client wants to know. Does high blood glucose increase the chances of diabetes? And remember that diabetes is outcome equals one. No diabetes <coughs> equals outcome equals zero. So let's see how we can use what we've learned so far about manipulating data and data frames to answer this question. So first, we're gonna just build some intuition and we're just gonna calculate the average glucose when the outcome is zero. So that's no diabetes. And the average glucose when outcome is one. And what would we expect is that the outcome when it's zero, the glucose when the outcome is zero would be lower than when the outcome is one. So let's see if that's correct. So we run it and you see the glucose is 110 when the outcome is zero and it's 140. So our intuition is correct. So right now you're answering the question, yes, high blood glucose does increase the chances of diabetes. Now let's look at this code carefully. So here we're selecting all of the rows that have outcome of zero and we're looking at the glucose column and then we're calculating the mean. Here we're looking at all of the rows that have glucose that have outcome equals one so they have diabetes we're looking at the glucose column and we're calculating the mean and then here we have a print statement this is the first time we've seen this print statement but you can see you can have some text and then a comma and then you put a variable and it'll append those two things so average glucose outcome when outcome is zero you get 109 and then 141. now we're going to supplement this analysis with something more sophisticated. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at four gr groups of people. People with low glucose and no diabetes, people with low glucose and high diabetes, people with high glucose and no diabetes, and people with high glucose and diabetes. And we're gonna see what percentage of people with gluco low glucose have diabetes and compare it with people with high glucose who have diabetes. And again, what we would expect is that people with low glucose would have less diabetes and then people with high glucose. So let's see how we do that. So first, we're going to define a glucose cutoff, which is the cutoff between low and high diabetes. So if people have glucose less than this, they have low diabetes. If it's greater than or equal to that, then we have high diabetes. So let's take a look at this low glucose, no diabetes. So this right here is defining low glucose. This right here is saying no diabetes. And then the and combines those two things together. So we get a Boolean expression. And then remember that shape returns row by column. Zero is the first item, so it's row. So this is the number of people, the number of rows that have low glucose and no diabetes. Now, all of the other code is very similar. So let's take a look at it. So again, we're looking at low glucose here, but this time they have diabetes. So it's one instead of zero. And again, we're pulling out the number of rows, which is the number of people. Okay, and then for high glucose, we have glucose greater than the cutoff and no diabetes. And then again, greater than the cutoff and no diabetes and, and diabetes this time. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this code and we'll see the results. So the number of people with low glucose and no diabetes is 181. The number of people with low glucose and diabetes is 16. And then the number of people with high glucose and no diabetes is 319. And the number of people with high glucose and diabetes is 252. And so now what we wanna do is we wanna calculate the percentage of people with low glucose with diabetes. So the people with low glucose with diabetes is the people with diabetes divided by the total number, which is the people with no diabetes and the people with diabetes. And then the people with high glucose with diabetes is equal to the people with diabetes divided by the total number, which is the people with no diabetes plus the people with diabetes. And so here's what we see. The percentage of people with low glucose with diabetes is 8%. And the percentage of people with high glucose with diabetes is 44%. So the number of people with diabetes with high glucose is five times greater than the people with low glucose. 
okay? So that shows, again, that people with high glucose are more likely to have diabetes. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to visualize this. So here's a way of visualizing it using matplotlib. And so what we're doing here is we're just taking the outcome and dividing up the data set and then plotting glucose. And so what you can see is that the people with outcome of one, they have diabetes, they have higher glucose levels typically than the people with outcome of zero, right? So this bar here in the middle, the average here is like 109, like we saw before. Up here, it's somewhere over here, which is like around 140, which is what we saw here. And so this allows us to visualize the result that we've created. Now, here's a better visualization using a box plot. So a box plot is going to require us to use another visualization package called Seaborn. And then we use the box plot and we just pass X as the outcome and Y as glucose. Okay. So it's as simple as that. Here's the data frame that we're using. And what the box plot is going to show is the median line, then the top quartile, bottom quartile. Okay? These are extreme values. And then here are outliers with the little dots. And what we see is that with outcome zero, the median is lower than the median one, the quartiles are lower, et cetera, et cetera. So now we have both data over here and a visualization demonstrating that people with high glucose are much more likely to have diabetes.